And you guys don't have to, but I know that school is coming upon you. And if you're anything like me, I was excited about school, but I was also nervous about school. So is there anybody here willing to share maybe one thing they're excited about school of, your, of the children in this group? Anybody willing to share one thing they're excited about and one thing they're nervous about starting school? Anybody? All right, Harper, let me see here. I'll try this one. All right. I'm excited for learn, finding new friends and learning new stuff, and I'm nervous to make sure I have nice friends and good people that I know. That's good, yeah. Well, that's a good concern. All right. Excited about? I'm excited about who my teacher is going to be, and, and I'm a little bit scared if my friends are going to be mean. Oh, well, <laughs> there you go. Sometimes that can happen. All right, here we go. I don't think they're going to be mean to you, though, Taylor. You're too wonderful. I'm excited to see my friends again, and I'm scared about how much I have to write. Yeah. He told me he got nervous. He was telling me at lunch or a family breakfast today, he was nervous because they had to buy six notebooks this year. And so they were nervous about that. OK, a couple more. Are you coming to me? All right, sweet. Here you go. I'm excited about my new teacher. And it, she seems really nice. And um, my sister had. Oh, wonderful. Well, you guys, all right, last one. I don't like school. Oh, well, <laughs> we'll end with you then. I'm excited about uh, talking to my friends, getting to meet them after like three months, and I'm nervous about because it's going to be a new school. So. New school, you're going into middle school this year, right? Yeah, that can be kind of nerve wracking. Wow. Oh, Hallie, you two? Oh, okay, one more. Why not? This is so wonderful. They much rather listen to you, do you know? Okay, all hearts clear, children? Okay. <laughs> you know, we can forget that we all carry <coughs> burdens, right? No matter how old you are, we have burdens, we have concerns, we have worries, and that never really changes. Right? Our worries are different. Um, as you get older, things uh, are different, but that worry and sometimes that anxiety can still be there, right? I get nervous. My first Sunday here, I meet mean, all these new people. I was excited to have new friends. Uh, I was excited about who was going to be mean here also. <laughs> I'm just joking. But. Uh, the Lord has uh, something to say to us about this. And so we're in the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, Jesus has the audacity to speak to us again, and he says, do not worry. Do not worry. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear? Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry in saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, 
And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I heard that um, today is the tomorrow that you were worried about. Right? Yesterday, yes. Today is the tomorrow that you were worried about yesterday. And uh, I thought that was a pretty good statement, right? We, uh, we tend to worry about the things that are upcoming, right? Uh, when, uh, when Bethany and I uh, were wanting to have a child, I was wondering when are we going to uh, uh, get pregnant, and by we I mean she, and then I was wondering... Oh, man, the baby's coming. When is the baby going to get here? When the baby got here, when are we going to be able to come home? Now she's home. When is she, right? And I'm assuming that just doesn't stop, right? As I've heard from many of the parents in this room, that there's a continuation of different worries at each uh, phase of life. And um, the point of what Jesus is trying to say here is that God is faithful, and he will take care of you. Trust in him, right? Throughout this whole thing, the point that Jesus is making is, God is faithful, trust in him, right? And I don't know if you ever have read this scripture or heard this scripture before, and you thought, man, Jesus is so naive, right? Anybody? Just me? Okay, well, I'll go home then because I know what the sermon says, right? In my mind, I can think of all the exceptions to this rule that he has, right? So do not worry about food. Well, there's an exception to that. Think about all the, the starving people, right? There are people in our life who don't have food. Are, aren't, you, aren't they supposed to be worried about that? Don't worry about the clothes that you have on. Well, you know, some people live where they are cold, they don't have coats, right? And they have to worry about their warmth. I imagine most of us here have coats, and the worry that we have about our coats is, are they in style this year, right? That's the type of worry that we have. And so it can be easy for us to think of all the exceptions of this rule, right? And I'm just thinking, you know, as a parent, like, I have lots of worries for my little one, right? I want her to be safe. I want her to be healthy. I want... And you have these different worries. And each one of us have worries of, man, am I going to have enough money when I retire, some of us are worried, am I going to have enough money to get through the day, right? We have all sorts of worries. This thing is driving me insane. I'm sorry. We have all sorts of worries that come to us and we can think, Jesus, you told us not to worry, and we go to the exceptions, right? And I think there are places in Scripture that talk about the exceptions, right? But I want us, instead of thinking of all the exceptions to what Jesus is teaching, to think about the actual point that he is making, right? But I think so often we think, man, Jesus, he's kind of like a hippie in this, in this uh, sermon right now. He's like, hey, man, don't worry, right? It's all going to be good. I saw a van uh, this week. It's like, help me along the way. And there's looking there, and this guy uh, doesn't look all that great, looks pretty dirty, has the dreads, and it doesn't look like a hippie van. He's like, help me along the way. I'm like, mm, I don't know. You seem to be doing fine, right? He had no worries. Is that what Jesus is saying? Hey, don't worry. And then to convince us that we shouldn't worry, he's just like, man, look at the birds. Look at the birds, man. They don't worry. Look at the birds. They, God takes care of the birds. He's going to take care of you, right? Consider the flowers. 
Consider them, dude. Right? For our peace, man. Look at the flowers. Right? And we can think that Jesus is kind of naive. Right? Does Jesus not understand my life? Huh? Anybody, anybody ever feel like this when they read the scripture? Do you not understand what I'm going through, Jesus? Yeah, it's easy for you not to worry, you being God and all, right? But me, I, I got a family I got to provide for. There's people on this earth that you place me with, right? And you know how much I love people, right? And we have all these different worries, and it seems like Jesus can be kind of naive. But how did Jesus view the world? How did Jesus view the world that he had this idea to look at the flowers of the field, to look at the birds, right? Because I got to come back to the fact that what? That Jesus is God, that Jesus is all-knowing, and if he's all-knowing, that means that Jesus is not naive, that he actually understands your concerns, that he understands why you're worried, he understands that you are worried, and he's not naive to that. And so why then does he say, do not worry? Why then does he say, look at the flowers, look at the birds, and it's not because Jesus is some kind of hippie. We're going to read Psalm 104, 10 through 18. And this is a scripture that Jesus would have heard, right? The Psalms were uh, the people's prayer book, right? And as Christians, that's how we use the Psalms as well. And if, if you're not in the practice of that, I would uh, encourage you to read through the Psalms and, and pray the Psalms. They have a lot to um, teach us. But I imagine Jesus heard this in his synagogue one day, multiple times maybe. He heard the creation story. And then he goes outside, he's looking at the birds, he's looking at the, the flowers, and he's pondering these things. And he's thinking about what God is like. And so let's, let's think through this. It tells us in Psalm 104, 10 through 18, talking about God here, you make springs pour out into the ravens, ravines, so streams gush out from the mountains. They provide water for all the animals, and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds nest beside the streams and sing among the branches of the trees, you send rain on the mountains from your heavenly home, and you fill the earth with the fruit of your labor. You cause grass to grow for the livestock and plants for people to use. You allow them to produce food from the earth, wine to make them glad, or grape juice to make them glad, <laughs> olive oil to soothe their skin, and bread to give them strength. The trees of the Lord are well cared for. You go outside, you see a tree, that's the Lord's tree. Yeah, take that to the bank. Those are the Lord's trees. The trees of the Lord are well cared for. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted. Planting trees. The birds make their nests and the storks make their homes in the cypresses. High in the mountains live the wild goats and the rocks of the refuge. And so we see... That God, what? He provides. That God is the one who provides the grass. God is the one who provides for the animals. God is the one who provides rain for the trees that are his. God is the one who provides the food for people. God provides all these resources. God is the one who gives care to all these things. God is the faithful one. And oftentimes, I think 
that I can begin to worry and think of all the exceptions in my life of why I should be worried, right? And to worry, God's not saying that you shouldn't have concern. God's not saying that you shouldn't plan ahead. God's not saying to be a lazy bum, to be a hippie, right? He's not saying any of those things, right? But he's saying, do not allow the worry of your life take your life. Do not allow the worries of your life to begin to suck you dry. Why? Because I am God, I am faithful, I am the one who provides food for all the animals that you see. When you look at the birds of the air, I'm taking care of them. When you see the trees, those are my trees that I planted. When you see the flowers of the field and you think, wow, how beautiful they are, those are my flowers. I am the one who provides. And so we need to remember the point that God is faithful. He will take care of you. Trust in him. And so I want us to read through this one more time. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink. And think about that. Do you need to eat and to drink in order to live? Yes, yes absolutely. We have to eat and drink in order to live. But Jesus said, uh, uh, or about your body, what you'll wear, is life not more than food? Life is more than food. Food provides what we need for life, but life is more than the food that we eat. We don't eat in order to live, right? We don't, or we don't live in order to eat, right? That there's more to it than just that. That God has us here to love, to love him, to love others. And if we are so consumed with our worries, right, it can blind us to the people around us. Worry has a way to have us look inward only. Right? When I'm worrying about myself and I'm worrying about me and my own, I'm not really concerned about those around me. I don't have time for, to make a call. I don't have time to stop by somebody's house. I don't have time. Why? Because... I'm worried about me and my own, right? I struggle with this. And I imagine some of you struggle with this also because there are real concerns in our life. And Jesus does not take that away. The Bible is very honest with the concerns of life and with the troubles of life. But God wants us to get to this place where we realize that he is faithful, that he will take care of you, right? I look at Edna May, right? Edna May here. She has eaten enough food to get to this point in her life. That's a lot of meals. That's a lot of meals. You've eaten a lot in your life, Edna May, right? That's pretty incredible, and then you think about all the people in history that have been eating meals. That's a lot of food. Over a long period of time. And then you put on top of that the animals that had to be provided for. Put on top of that the fish. And then you talk about the rain in order for the food to be made, right? That's a lot of provision that we take for granted every single day, especially for those of us who live in this culture where food is not really a worry for most of us, right? We can go down, not, we don't have to go one mile to find food, right? It's pretty easy to find. God gives provision. So do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, about your body, what you'll wear, is life not more than food? God created us for relationship, that we would trust in him. 
Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Look at the birds of the air. This is not hippie Jesus. Oh, look at the birds, man. Look at the birds. Caca. Wow. God provides, man. No, he's being serious. How do I put this sermon into my life? How do I make this? Go home and think about the birds. That's your life application today. That's what Jesus is saying. Go home and think about some birds, all right? So I'm going to give you a picture of one of my birds. Here we go. Hey. It's one of my chickens. We call her Sugar. <laughs> and she is fluffy and not that bright. <laughs> but she is cute, so she makes up it that way. It's interesting when you're taking care of these silly chickens that they... They're goofy, man. You let them out, and they do the same thing every single day. They go out there, and they're eating grasshoppers, and they're looking around, and they dig at stuff, and they fight amongst themselves, right? And they do this all day. And if, uh, if I am not out there, at, uh, if I don't go out there before sun, sunset, they go into the barn all by themselves, right? And they'll flap up. They'll get on their little nest or whatever they're on, right? And they're up there, and they're going to sleep. And never, ever, ever have I seen a chicken outside. Oh, man. Man, we got we to gotta pile up this food, man, because it's not going to be here tomorrow. World War III could be tomorrow. Have you seen the news? Man, we got we to gotta collect this food, right? Never. Have I seen Sugar out there stressed out of her mind thinking about where is this food going to come from tomorrow, right? I got to put some feed in my retirement stock, man, because once I retire, it's all over. Right? I don't know if I'm going to make it. Never. I see them go up. <laughs> they think they go to bed. They fly up, and the next morning, they're just going out there doing the same thing again, night after night. There's one little chicken, this black chicken. It sees me, and it comes running to me. It comes running. <laughs> and it stops at me. I put my little hands out, and I grab it, and it just, uh, I pet its little chest, right? I haven't named this chicken, which is weird. A little, oh, no way I have, Nuggy. Nuggy, because he looked like our other chicken, Nugget. Anyway, so Nuggy. And petting Nuggy, right? And this chicken knows, right? This one's smarter than the rest of them. It knows who the man is, right? <laughs> this chicken knows where the food comes from. And so it comes running up to me, knows I'm going to pet it, knows I'm going to feed it, right? No nuggy is not worried about, is my master going to come out, right, and feed me today? Why? Because every single day, I go out there and I feed the stinking chickens. Right? Nuggy's not worried. Sugar's not worried. Because they know that Luke's coming out there to feed them. They know they're going to be provided for. They're not staying to lay up night thinking about it all. The chickens get it. And they have Luke Letzinger as their God. <laughs> Right? as their master. And Luke is frail. Luke is forgetful, right? If anybody would fail these chickens, it would be me, right? And yet, how often are we staying up at night worrying, oh God, are you gonna, are you gonna come through on this? Oh God, and I'm telling you, it is easy, and I understand that we can come up with the exceptions. That's not what this sermon is about today, okay? 
There'll be other times, and you've heard me preach many things, right? lamentations, right? Where we talk about the exceptions of life. That's not the point of today's sermon. The point of today's sermon is God is faithful. He will provide. He will take care of you. Be like the birds. Trust in him. Look how the flowers as a field grow. They do not labor or spin. I got flowers in my front yard. And these rose bushes, Becky gave uh, Bethany a rose bush. So if you have one rose bush on this side, then what do you have to have on the other side? Another rose bush. So now I have two rose bushes there in the front. And I watch these rose bushes and these beautiful flowers somehow come out of this thing. And then two days later, what happens? Dead. This heat is stifling, right? Torches them. But then what do I notice again? A couple days, a few days later, another rose comes out. It's like, man, God designed this thing to stay alive, to come through, and something beautiful comes through, and it's unreal. And Jesus is looking at these things. He's looking at the birds of the air. He's looking at the chickens, right? He's looking at these flowers, and he realizes that God is a faithful God. And he says, not even Solomon, King Solomon, who had all the riches, one of the most wisest kings of them all, most powerful, most rich king of their time, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these flowers. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is scorched in Kansas weather, Will he not much more take care of you? Here's the kicker. You of little faith. Ah, Jesus. We can talk about the exceptions. I know they're there. I'm not saying they're not. That's not what the point is today. And Jesus is saying is, look at this point. God is faithful. He will take care of you. Trust in him. And so, what are we to do? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And what? And all these things will be given to you as well. When I... think about all the worries of my life, and I'm trying to think of all the ways that I can fix the problems that are going on. What is it? That's me trying to control the situation. And me worrying is mostly me saying, what if this? What if that? What if this? And I'm trying to think of all the different scenarios. And then I'm going to try to come up with an answer for each one of those scenarios. So when the time comes, I'm going to be ready, right? And I want to have control of this. But there's still, no matter what we come up with, right, if I do option A, then what if this? Well, then I go to A.1. Well, then once A.1 comes in, what if this, right? And these things that we come up with, man, they just add more worry to our life. And so what does Jesus say? But seek first his kingdom. We're putting God first. God, you know the things I'm going through. You know the exceptions. You know that I'm worried. But Lord, I'm going to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And when I am able to get my eyes off of myself and off of my worries and look to God and I ponder the chickens, and I ponder the flowers. What I realize is God is faithful. He will take care of me. Trust in him. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. 
And God, I, I must confess that when I hear these words of yours that I can think of all sorts of exceptions and I think of all the reasons why I should be worried. And But God, today, would we just hear the point that you made? Because obviously we need to hear it. And God, maybe today, would we just have some life application to our week? And may we ponder the birds this week. When we see a bird, God, we, we be reminded of your faithfulness. When we see flowers this week, would we be reminded, God, that you care for us? And God, would we ponder these things in light of who you are, our Heavenly Father? God, we know that you are faithful. God, we know that you are going to care for us. So, Lord, we say we're going to trust in you. And where we lack our trust, God, we, we trust that you're going to help us in that as well. We pray that it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. You are dismissed.